Hey everyone, it's Ramzi. Today I'm going to show you how I managed to go from tasks piling up, no way to sort them, no way to feel that I've done some things that I feel accomplished, to a system where I managed to capture my thoughts, sort them out, clarify them, so that it brings me a feeling of accomplishment and peace. This method is called getting things done. So this method was invented by a guy called David Allen, who wrote a book about it. He was a consultant before and he needed to find a way to feel less stressed, more productive. What does getting things done look like at its core? Basically, it's made of five main steps. First one is capturing your thoughts. So you're gonna make sure each time something crosses your mind, it's captured in your notebook, phone, to-do app, whatever you want. Then it's about clarifying. You're gonna decide if it's something you can do or if it looks much bigger than you thought and it could be a project or if it's not an action, but something you wanna store for later, for knowledge, for reference, maybe an article you read, maybe a thought you had. Then it's about organizing. You're gonna put everything in the right place. You're gonna add dates, you're gonna prioritize it, you're gonna decide if it falls into a certain area of your life and if you need to tackle it during your work day or on the weekend, then we're gonna look at reviewing your work. It's about frequently looking over your tasks, updating them, refining them, and also reflecting on how efficient you were and how you can make it better, how you can improve your workflow and your way of tackling your to-do list. And the final one is obviously engaging with your tasks. It's about tackling what's very quick to do as soon as possible, putting the actions in your to-do list and turning your bigger actions into projects by breaking them down into sizable steps that you can actually get done. Now let's dive in the weekly review before getting in the getting things done system. The weekly review is something I recommend you to do on Saturday, on Sunday, or maybe on Monday morning, but it should be at a moment where you don't have any distraction. The first thing you're gonna do is gonna be cleaning out your workspace. You're gonna make sure that all your file, notes, tasks are all sorted out, your, that your inbox is empty and that you're ready to go on to the next step, which is about reflecting over the past week. You're gonna look at what you did from Monday till the end of the week and you're gonna assess whether you actually got it done, what went well, what you could have improved in your workflow. Then you're gonna tackle your current goals and your current projects. So you're gonna decide what is top priority for the next week, what you need to focus on in each of your life area, whether it's work, personal life, health, you're gonna basically plan what needs to happen next. The next step is to plan the week ahead and you're gonna figure out what the most important tasks are for the week ahead, which one are aligned with your goals and you're gonna process them and prioritize them and put them in your calendar if they are time bound. The last step is about thinking bigger. In the getting things done method, there's a list or a storage called the someday maybe list. It's basically everything that comes into your inbox and you don't want to tackle right now. You want to leave it for later. You're going to review this list and decide in each task of the list, which one I actually can do now, which one have become priority now. One thing I want to show you to kind of get a step back and see the bigger picture to why this method was invented by David Allen is the horizons of focus. Although this method is focused on your projects and actions and actually getting things done, it needs to fall into a bigger picture of your life which stands for your purpose, which you break down into your vision and goals and areas of focus, which are the life areas that you will see in the getting things done template. I've always struggled with this getting things done method. I never really found a framework or a way for it to align with my life. I decided to create it for myself. And I'm a ClickUp consultant. So I thought, why not doing it in ClickUp, which is probably one of the best to-do apps nowadays. It works for one person, but it also works for a 200, 300 people team. It's really versatile and it can really fall into your personal and business life. All right, so the getting things done method looks a little bit like this if you break it down. So it all starts with your inbox and your inbox is where you're gonna capture everything that comes through your mind, whether it's tasks, ideas, things that you have to do or things that you enjoy, an article, something that comes through your head basically and you feel is worth capturing. Then from the inbox, you're going to decide if it's actionable or not, if it's actually a task or if it's just something, an idea, an article, but something very vague that I cannot put an action on right now. If you can't, you're going to ask yourself if it's useful. Is this something that I need for later? Is it a reference, an article that I like and that I need to read later? If it's not, you're going to trash it. 
it's not actionable, it's not useful, I don't need it. Now, if it is, you're gonna reference it. You're gonna store it for later. It's gonna go into a list called reference where you're gonna have anything that could be useful, but is not really actionable. Then bring us back to the path of something that's actionable. You're gonna ask yourself, can I do it in one go? Can I actually do it in a few minutes or in an hour or in some sizable amount of time? If you can't, and that's something that probably needs a few weeks or days or month, you're gonna bring it to the project list because it's not a task, it's not an action, it's a bigger project. Then you're gonna break it down and plan that project properly. Now getting back to the situation where you can do it in one go, you're gonna decide if you wanna bring it to your personal to-do list and tackle it yourself, if it actually needs to be delegated to someone or if it's something that you cannot really do right now that you don't know if you can delegate it yet, so it will go into your waiting for list. You have your inbox where you capture your tasks, you decide it's actionable, it goes in your to-do or you delegate it or it waits for something. If it's not actionable, it goes either into your trash or your reference. Now I ask myself, how can I create this system in ClickUp? That's where the GTD template comes in. My template will include the inbox system, all the GTD lists that we've seen earlier, to do someday maybe the delegated tasks, your life areas and priorities, which are concepts we haven't talked about yet, but I'll show you how it looks into the template. The calendar view to view tasks that are time bound, smart automations that sort the task so that you don't have to, weekly and quarterly reflections. Now there are things that are in the getting things done method, but I didn't put here, like the monthly reflection, for example, but I really wanted to simplify it and strip it down to what mattered the most so that you actually use it and it doesn't feel too overwhelming, the template. The first thing I'm going to do is inbox an idea that I have. And to be more realistic, we're going to use the ClickUp mobile app because it could be that you're on the street, walking, having an idea. Very often you're not in front of your computer. We're gonna open the ClickUp app through the widget and it brings us straight into your inbox. Then I'm gonna put my ideas for phone release. Great, then I'm gonna just create the task. And that's it, that's all I have to do. I don't need to go further for now, it's just capturing my thoughts. Say I have a second idea, it's gonna be go buy the new TV. And then I'm gonna create this one as well. I've captured a few of my tasks. As you can see, there are more in my inbox. And then I'm just shutting out the app and we're going to move on to the computer. All right, so now we're back to ClickUp on your computer. As you can see, the tasks that we just put on our phone are appearing here. And they're also appearing with the other tasks that we've put on our inbox. Is it the parent, but Christmas gifts? So what we're going to do first is sort these tasks out. Let's assume we're at the end of our week. We are reviewing our tasks. We're going to go through them one by one. So visit parents on holidays is a do. Buy the Christmas gifts is also a task that we have to do. Then we're going to have order from suppliers, do compile and submit task requirements, goes into my to do, confirm the attendance, update the content calendar. That's not something I want to do right now. I'm going to bring it to the someday maybe list. Then prepare presentation for phone release, which is the one I've captured earlier. I'm going to bring it into the work life area and go buy the new TV. I'm going to bring it into the home life area. Then there's an article I like that I've added here and it's about finance. I'll put it into finance area. Next, we're gonna sort these tasks out as well. As you can see for sorting, you will have some information here on top to remind you of what is to do, what is to delegate, what's a project, what to do someday. In the presentation for phone release, I'm gonna delegate it to someone on my team and the new TV, I will do it. This article is more of a reference for later. I'll save it. As you can see, I've cleaned out my inbox. I've gone to inbox zero and that's perfect, but my tasks didn't disappear. They just go somewhere else through ClickUp automations. Now, the first view that you have is the someday maybe view. In this view, you'll have everything that you might do, but you're unsure, or maybe it needs for some input. It's something that is on hold for now. Next, we have the reference list. If you go into this list, you'll have everything that is not actionable, but you want to keep for later as a reference to review some info. We have results of a coaching we made, for example. We have an article. We have infos about an anniversary dinner, and we can keep that stored here for reference. We can also archive it later if we don't need it anymore. To do so, you just go here and click the track. That's it for the capture phase. We've gone to our inbox zero. 
we've decided what we need to do or what we need to keep for reference, what we might do someday. You have two lists here. You have a to-do list and the projects list. The to-do list is whatever had the to-do status and it will land here and it becomes a ticker, done or not done. If you've done something, you just tick it, then you will have a set of different tasks. This list is sorted not by life area, but by priority, because we want to prioritize things depending on the importance they have. If these items have some priority, we need to put it during our weekly reviews. In the warehouse promo, they are not really important. The Christmas gifts, that is urgent. Attendance to the convention, it's high priority. Turning the books, it's normal priority. Getting the new TV is not very important. We already have one. So as you can see, I've prioritized my tasks and that gives me already a little bit more peace because I know I need to go through these three first, then these three next. Prioritizing things is already telling your brain, okay, now you know what matters, focus on what matters. If we have time, if we have space, we'll do what's less of a priority. Now in the inbox, we had a status called delegated. If you go into that status, you will have everything that has a delegated tag, the birthday dinner, the prepare presentation for phone release, we've delegated those. As you can see, if I get back here and I decide to add a tag to this, for example, and delegate it, it will disappear from the to-do list and go into your delegated list. That's a very quick way to delegate a task if you know you have some assistance or you have someone that works with you on certain parts of your life. I'm gonna go back to my to-do list now and it might happen that some of the tasks that you have to do are waiting for something. You cannot make them move forward to unclutter your to-do list again to give you more peace. We're going to add a tag called waiting for. If you decide this is waiting for something, these three tasks will disappear from this list and they will appear in your waiting for list, which is where you will see what's waiting for something. If it's been unblocked, you can just remove the tag and it will go back in your to-do and you have to tackle it. The waiting for is kind of a buffer for you to focus on what you have control on and let go of what's waiting for something so that it doesn't stress you out and appear in your to-do. My last point when it comes to getting things done is gonna be the calendar view. This view is pretty nice because you can drag and drop your tasks into your calendar so that you know when some task hits a deadline. This one, for example, we'll do it on next weekend. This one, I'll also do it on Saturday. Then this one, I'll do it during my workday. This one too, and this one as well. These ones are not really time bound, so I can just leave them here. Another thing you can display is the life area of the task, as well as the tag, if it's waiting for or delegated, so that you know what you have to do or what's waiting for something, but it's hitting a deadline pretty soon. This will help you take actions over deadlines and plan things out to become more serene. Now getting to the project list. The project list is where you're gonna split what's actionable into smaller batches so that it becomes more sizable. So for example, we have this task, launch online course on ClickUp. Automatically through a template, ClickUp will create some subtasks for you to kind of split out your work. By default, it will create three, but you could create as many subtasks as you want. For example, prepare outline, also rename this task and say this one is record videos, this one, prepare slides, and this one, publish. As you can see, this big project has already become more sizable, and I can even create third level subtasks to make this project even less intimidating. For the outline, I could say, prepare part one, part two, and prepare part three. This has become more sizable, more manageable, and then I can put deadlines. I could put a deadline on the whole project, finish it by the end of the month, and then put some realistic deadlines on the smaller tasks and tackle it down that way. The difference between the to-do and the project list is that the to-do list is small, sizable actions. We've seen it earlier in the diagram. And the project list is bigger chunks, big initiatives that you have to break down into action. But we're gonna go to the last part of our template, which is the reviews list. In the reviews list, you will have different types of reviews that will create themselves automatically. It will make use of the ClickUp recurring task feature. And every quarter, it will create a new quarterly review and every week it will create a new weekly review. As you can see, my next Friday's review is here. During the weekly review, you have to clear your inbox, check your past, current, and next week's calendar, update your to-do, follow up on the waiting for items, 
ensure your projects have next action, update your someday maybe list. Okay, great. Then the quarterly review, which is a little bit more holistic, a little bit more high level, is going to be to review the completed project and celebrate, update your goals, assess your personal and professional changes, plan your upcoming events. It's kind of a bit more reflective, it requires more time, but you also do it less often. These kind of guidelines are pretty useful because sometimes I find myself missing review and I can view it here. If the review is missed, I cannot change the status to missed review if I haven't done it. I recommend you to be accountable with this and to be honest with this so that when you miss a review, you will see them here and it will kind of make you more conscious that you need to take these steps of doing these weekly reviews. So in every list that you have in this template, you'll have some quick instructions here to explain you a little bit what you have to do in each reviews, what does your to-do look like here, what does the waiting for tag means, what does the delegated tag means, then your inbox, you will see everything about how to capture a task, label it, decide if it's actionable or not. So you have kind of these quick reminders of how to use this template. I find it pretty useful. But on top of that, there's a full tutorial that's available here that explains you how the methodology works. You have this YouTube video to help you. If you've gone through it completely, you've probably understood how the template works. That's a great first step. The next step is getting it through the link in the description. I'm convinced it will save you so much time. It will bring you peace. It will bring you clarity and it will clean out all the clutter that's piling up in your to do and inbox. I want to wrap up this video by giving you a few tips when it comes to using the getting things done method. The first one is going to be to give yourself time. This is a complex methodology that requires you to understand it first, to understand how each list works. I advise you to read the book or read the principles of getting things done to understand it. The next one is going to be to keep it simple. Start simple. Start by understanding it first. Understand the inbox. Capture your tasks. Don't add too many tasks. Start maybe with one area of your life, maybe your work then move on to the next life areas to organize it better. Don't be afraid to tweak the template. There are things that are in the book that I didn't put in the template. Like I said, the monthly review, the energy levels, these are things that are mentioned by David Allen and that you can use, add them to the template. If you have any question, I'm here to help. And my next piece of advice is to organize it by life area. Don't be afraid to create new life areas, but it's important that you fill up that field because it's important for you to tackle your work tasks during your work days, to tackle your personal tasks during your weekends and not to mix things up and to create boundaries between your personal life and private life. The final one is going to be to do the actual reviews. Don't underestimate the reviews. They're quite important. They're essential for you to kind of assess what you did, how to work better, what you could improve on. I've kept only the weekly and the quarterly reviews, which are the most important to me. It's important that you take the time to do them. Otherwise, the method won't work. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Grab the template in the description and stay productive.